So now in this final video on development, we're going to talk about how development, specifically the point of cleavages, are regulated. So we'll entitle the next flowchart, Cleavage Regulation. And here, what we want to talk about, whenever we talk about regulation, what we're stating is a process is going to be controlled by some overarching factors. Something is going to have an influence on an important process, and thus it's going to regulate that important process. A very important process that occurs within all of us at an embryonic stage is cleavages. And how is this regulated and controlled? Let's take a look. So, cleavage regulation. What we have to understand about this process and idea first is that the idea, or sort of the overall idea of a newly fertilized egg, just to put ourselves in the right situation and understand what it really means to be a newly fertilized egg. First of all, we have to remember that a newly fertilized egg is technically just a zygote, and thus it's a single nucleus. It's a single cell, and it's containing a single fused nucleus from mom nucleus, dad nucleus, genomes combined together to give you the nucleus and genomes of this individual. But what we have to understand is that if there's just one nucleus, that means there's just one copy of all the DNA that this organism will ever have. That would mean that, technically speaking, that organism has a very little amount of DNA. It only has one copy. It only has one set from mom, one set from dad, and it's not, you know, a thousand cells. It's not a million cells of million, you know, copies of DNA. There has not been a moment or second of DNA replication in this structure. But what do we remember? DNA is the blueprint of life. It constructs and guides everything that an organism will do. But right now, there's not enough information for this newly fertilized egg to guide and construct its own its own development, rather. So how is it going to develop if it doesn't have enough directions to guide its development? You're going to then utilize something else. So we can broadly state that there's not enough because there's a little bit of DNA, there's not enough mRNA, which is transcribed from DNA, that blueprint, to meet, there's not enough mRNA to meet all of the cell's needs for proteins. All of cell's need for proteins. Remember, we have to divide. Dividing involves proteins. And this is going to be difficult for us to make all the proteins necessary for division if we have only one set of DNA, if we only have one copy of mom and one copy of dad fused in this tiny, small, single nucleus. So how do we do this? How do we regulate our cleavages that we need to do to develop? We don't do it. Initially, this structure, the zygote, that newly fertilized egg, must rely on something else. The initial development Therefore, the initial cleavages, the first couple of division events, are all going to be as a result and carried out by something else, somebody else's stuff. They are carried out by the good old maternal, maternal mRNA slash thus proteins that are going to be transcribed as a result of this mRNA from oogenesis. Basically, if you remember, we always stated that a large non-motile egg is the result of oogenesis at ovulation. It's released from the ovary into the oviduct in hopes of fertilization by sperm. Sperm provides DNA. Great. And the egg also provides DNA. Great. That DNA fuses into a single nucleus problem. There's not enough DNA. There's not enough information to guide the entire development of this individual. So what do you do? You take some of the maternal mRNA that is intrinsic, that is within and in the egg itself. The egg itself contains a lot of maternal material, maternal organelles that are going to help this developing organism start its development because it's going to utilize the mom's individual stuff that it's given to this egg. All this stuff was invested to create this one egg. Remember from all those steps of ovulation and menstrual cycle, all of that was done for a reason and a very important reason and that is because maternal mRNA and proteins will be within this large egg to help guide the overall zygote formation. 
But then what's going to happen is this stuff, even though it's great and it helps the initial development, it's going to then sort of go away. It's going to then not be necessary because after many cleavages, after this initial development has been kickstarted and helped by the mother's uh, mRNA and proteins, therefore, after some cleavages, after its help, you're going to have now many blastomeres. Many blastomeres are going to thus mean many nuclei. Look how we're rounding about. Initially, we started with a single nucleus with little DNA. Many blastomeres, many nuclei. That would mean what? A lot of DNA. This structure now, this developing embryo, has lots of DNA. Therefore, even though there's a lot of small cells, these small cells all contain lots of genetic material. And thus, the small cells are going to be with enough. The small cells, aka the blastomeres of the blastula, are with are now now finally have enough DNA plus therefore mRNA to support their needs. So they become independent once they have divided enough. Thus, we have to give a great thank you to this maternal mRNA and proteins that was present in order to promote the zygote's initial cleavages, initial development, therefore. And then finally, we kicked in our own DNA that was, of course, given to us by mom and dad. But now we have lots of it. Thus, we can guide the entire developmental process by ourselves independently of the maternal mRNA and proteins. But of course, we needed that kickstart. There's that kickstart. There's that motivation from mom. And then we can do it on our own. That covers our look at development one. Again, I really like this lecture and this part of this course because we see just how complex and advanced and how worthy of appreciation all of these events are within our lives.